Bitwig Studio is one of the most innovative DAWs or music programs that I know. With version 5, great new features have been added that I have never seen in another program. My name is Thomas Foster and in this tutorial I will give you a quick and easy to understand look at Bitwig Studio 5. Good to have you here, let's go! After opening Bitwig Studio 5 the first time, it should look like this. If it doesn't look like this, um, you have to change maybe the settings. To change the settings, we click here this dashboard button. And now we have here user settings, packages and help. Let's go to settings. And here in the user interface, you can change the language. In this case, English is the right choice. And you can change the display profile. For example, if you have two screens, maybe Dual Display Studio is good for you. Uh, but if you want to join this tutorial, maybe you should go like me to single display. Then it's more easy to follow the steps I'm doing. By the way, uh, let's go to audio. And here is the audio driver. So you should go to Core Audio and choose your audio card that you have connected to your computer. Uh, especially if you don't hear anything in Bitwig Studio, let's, uh, you should change the settings here. So let's click on this cross here to go out again. And let's start to have some fun by making some music. Um, we have here the most important button of this software. You know what this is? This is the play button. Let's click it and then some things are happening. For example, you see the cursor, or let's call it the locator, uh, moving over the timeline, right? And you see here the seconds and here you see the bars and beats. And we also can hear the bars and beats by clicking the metronome. Here this little button and now one two, three, four. As we are, you see it here, in a four to four bar, we hear the four quarters of a bar. Let's click stop again. How fast we hear them, we can change here with the tempo in BPM, means beats per minute. So let's click on stop again to go to the very beginning. Let's say play. And if we go down to, let's say, 80, 90 BPM, That's maybe a good tempo for a hip-hop track. If you want to produce a pop track, let's go to something like 115. If you want to make a club track, maybe between 120, 130 is a good tempo. Dubstep would be over 140. And uh, maybe drum and bass at 160 or 180. If you want to make speed metal, maybe 299 is cool for you. But I would go now to a up-tempo medium track to 120 BPM. Let's listen to this again. That's wonderful. Here we have the clip launcher. As we don't need this in the moment, let's close it by clicking here the show clip launcher button. Now we have a bigger display that is good. We also can click some things here to open this panel, but as the information panel is very useful, I would recommend to let this open, right? Uh, here in this information panel, you see ev everything that is selected. So, for example, if I select this audio track here, now you hear my voice double because it's also on this audio track. Um, now we see here the information about this audio track. So I can change, for example, the color to red. Now it's red here. I click now on the instrument track, click on blue, and now our instrument track is blue. We can change the name here. Let's type in drums. And now we also can see the name here. All right. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to load a sound. So If the uh, instrument track, called drums in this case, is selected, then you should see here this black box with this plus sign here. If you don't see it, you can click here, show device panel to open it, right? And now we click on this plus 
to load the browser to load something on this instrument track. What is an instrument track? Um, on an audio track, you can record audio or you can import audio files. And on an instrument track, you can record or create MIDI notes and you can load sounds that play these notes. And that's what we do now. We click here this plus to open the browser. In version 5 is a brand new browser that is pretty cool and pretty massive. So, But in this case we do something very simple. We load the drum machine. If you don't see it, you can type in the first letters, for example like drum, and then you should see it. And we double click it to load it on our instrument track. So let's click on audio, nothing is loaded. You just hear my voice two times because the record button is uh, hot, we would say. Let's go to the instrument track and now we see the drum rack, um, that we, the drum machine, sorry, that we loaded. And now I want to load some sounds in the drum machine. To load a sound in an instrument, we click here this little folder and let's do this. Now again we see the browser. And now we can click some sounds. And if you have a keyboard connected, you should be able to play the sounds, like me, on your keyboard. But the keyboard is not so important right now. I show you a much better way. Here we go to bongos, for example. Very nice. Um, I would like to call something with house, the deep house kit. Could be cool. Let's make a double click or say here confirm and now I can play the sounds on my keyboard. So I could record the sounds now. So I could go here to record, press the play button and now we play. Okay and now we go press stop again to go to the beginning and can listen to this. Yeah, but that's not what we want to do. So let's erase this again. This was just a little test. Uh, let's make a double click on the first track in the very beginning. And um, now you should have a clip that is exactly one bar. To hear just this bar, so if I say play now, you see the cursor is running uh, yeah, to the right side. And we want to loop the first bar. To do this, we can zoom out or in a little bit if we go to this dark gray area, click down and now I move, while I hold down the mouse, I'm moving the mouse down. And now we see that we have a loop over two bars. To activate the loop, we click here this button. Now let's check out this two bar loop, we'll play bar one, bar two and now boom. Here's the loop. But I want to have a one bar loop. So I go here to the right side where I have this special mouse symbol that shows me that I can change the length of this loop. Let's go down to exactly one bar. And now we have one bar in a loop. There's a different way to do this. I can just select this clip and now I can say Command or Control L to create a loop on the selected clip. Okay. Now to create notes, we make a double click on this clip in the upper area where it's black, right? Double click and now we see the drum editor or you can also go to the notes editor. Um, in this case, let's work with the drum editor as we want to program some uh, drums. Um, we, you can scroll up and down. So let's scroll down that we see the first sound called the kick. And if I click this little speakers here, I can listen to the same sounds that I also could play on my keyboard here. Okay, jetzt, uh, now, <laughs> that was a German word, I'm sorry. Uh, to create a first note, we make a double click here on the kick in the first field, in the first sixteenth. Double click. All right. Now we created here a bass drum. We do this. We can make it a little bit longer or shorter. But as these are drums, it's not so important how long these uh, files are. Uh, these notes are. Sorry. Let's make a double click here at 1.2. 
uh, at 1.3 and 1.4. These are the four quarters of a bar. And if we create a bass drum, we created a four, four to the floor beat. We have the bass drum exactly on every quarter like our metronome. Let's deactivate the metronome to hear better the bass drum or the kick. On every second kick, I want to hear a snare drum. So let's make a double click here and a double click here and listen again. Very good. Let's add a clap. Um, the clap is, we can listen here on this note, all right, double click, double click. So the, the clap is too loud. We can change the velocity because most of the time the velocity is controlling the volume. So let's select the two claps with a square like this. And here you see a lot of information for the two notes we have selected. For example, we could change the position here. Um, we could change the length here. Let's make it undo. We could change the, the, the note, the key, like this. But I would change, like to change the velocity. At the moment, we are at 78. Let's go down to 20 or 30. That sounds good for me. And I want to make it a little earlier. It's always good to move the clap a little bit to the left. And to do this, um, you see, it's not possible because at the moment I go a little bit to the left, I'm already too much on the left side. So to make just a little movement, I hold down the shift key and now I can make really small changes like this. Still too much. Maybe we zoom in a little bit. All right. Maybe the half of this sounds good. Yeah, better. Maybe still a little bit too much. Again, we select both claps. We zoom in a little bit and move it again to the left. right. That's good. Now I want to hear a hi-hat in between every kick. So let's find a good hi-hat. This one is nice. Uh, one, two, the third, 16 maybe is good. We need more velocity. So let's go here to velocity. Let's go up to 70. That's good. To copy this hi-hat, we can select exactly a quarter of this hi-hat like this. And now we can duplicate it with Command or Control D. Three times. And then it sounds like this. And uh, I would like to add a little ghost note here before the third hi-hat. So let's make a double click here. Ah, I don't like what is happening. So let's make undo by clicking Command Z or Control Z. Let's make this on another note. And let's make this a little shorter like this. And now we can move it down. And yes, the velocity should be with less volume than this note. So as this is 70, maybe for this little ghost note, uh, 25 is good. And uh, uh, still too much. Let's go down to 12. That's nice. And let's make this note shorter so we can copy this with the less velocity here to the last 16th. That's nice. Now I want to add a little shuffle. What is a shuffle? A shuffle would mean that every second 16th would move to the right like this, right? To do this, we have to select this clip and take care that the shuffle is activated. If it is activated on our clip, we can control it for the whole song here in the play menu. So we go to the play menu, we go here to groove, enable the groove, and now we can control the velocity. So listen especially to these hi-hats, how these are getting more swing, more groove, more shuffle, if I go here up in percent. Um, so let's start with zero, no shuffle, and now we go up. If 
I go down with the tempo, you hear it much more in detail. Without shovel. With shovel. So let's go to 50% and back to the tempo of 120 or 23. So if this sounds like this on your system, I say congratulations. You created your first beat in Bitwig Studio. My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production, which is all about music production. Here you will find tutorials on the most important DAWs or music programs, the most important plugins and I'll show you how to produce the current sound of the charts and the clubs. If you have any questions about this video or more generally about music production, just write me in the comments. I'll answer all your questions. Of course, I'm also happy about the simple feedback or suggestion for another video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. At this point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers!